Hi, in this tutorial we're going to look at different types of while loops. There are basically three different types of while loops. One is a counter controlled, another is a sentinel controlled, and one is a flag controlled. So we're going to look at an example of each one. So to begin with, we'll look at a counter controlled while loop. Now a counter controlled while loop is good if you know exactly how many times to loop through something or how many pieces of data might need to be read in. So I'm going to begin with creating a couple of integers. Let's say int, we'll say i is equal to 1 and n is equal to 0. And we'll do this dynamically so we'll get a number from the user. So we'll say c out, c out, enter a number, and to get that we'll do c in, and that is going to be n, n will be our number from the user. And so what we'll do is, after the user types in a number, we'll loop through a c out statement that many times. So we'll start with while and our condition. So while i is going to be our initialized value. So while i is less than or equal to n, right? So while 1 is less than or equal to n. So right away, this is going to start off to be false, right? 1 will not be less than or equal to 0. And so what do we want it to do if this is true? That means n is 1 or above. And we'll write some statements in here. So let's do a c out that says what the value of i is, and we'll put that on each line. And then if you remember, we need to change the value of i so that this will eventually become false. So I'm going to say i, I'm going to try a different way, plus equals 1. Before we did it with an i++, plus plus, this is just another way of saying the same thing. i is equal to i plus 1, so we'll add 1 to it. So let me run this. Should ask us for our number. And we'll put in 7. And then you can see that it output 1 through 7. So it starts off with i as 1. n starts out as 0, but then when I typed in 7, then n became the value of 7. So as long as 1 is less than or equal to 7, it's going to do a C out statement that just prints out the number for i. So it's 1, and then we increase the value by 1, and it comes back up here and it says 2 less than or equal to 7, true, it prints i, and it repeats over and over again. So at the end of the while loop, it comes back up and it checks this condition again, and if it's true, it's going to print the value of i and then increase it. So the value of i when this loop ends is actually 8. If I typed in 7, then it's going to say 7 plus equals 1. That becomes 8. 8 less than or equal to 7 is what makes this false. So this is a counter-controlled while loop. We gave it an exact number of times. This is the counter how many times it should do this while loop. So it can be dynamic in the sense that we have a variable that is controlling how many times it should be. For the next example, we're going to look at a sentinel controlled while loop. So I'm going to just clear out all of this and start a new program. Right, a sentinel controlled variable is when it's testing the condition and the loop will end when a sentinel value is encountered. So we're going to do, with this example, we're going to use a string. So I'm going to put in, to include the string header file, and we'll create a variable called string, and it'll be my input. And we'll say while my input is not equal to a specific string. So in this case, cookie is going to be our sentinel value. This is what we want to check to see if it's equal to. So while it's not equal to cookie, then it's going to 
run the statements that are inside the curly braces. So I'm just going to put a comment in here. We're going to ask the player for a cookie. So we'll do a C out, give me a cookie, and we'll use get line with C in and my input. And then we'll come down here. We'll put a C out statement so that we can see when we exit out of the while loop. So we'll say yum cookie. So in this case, cookie is our sentinel. This is what we're looking for a match in. So let's try running this. Okay, and it says, give me a cookie. And I could type in something like apple and give me a cookie, toys. Let's try cookie uppercase. No, it doesn't recognize that as uppercase or just with a capital C, but what it's looking for is exactly cookie all in lowercase. And when we finally do give it a cookie, it exits out of the loop and displays our C out statement after it. So cookie is our sentinel. This is what it's checking to look for a match. While it's not equal to cookie, right? Exclamation point equal is not equal. So as long as we're putting in values here that are not equal to cookie, all lowercase, then it keeps looping through here saying, give me a cookie, and then it waits for the input from the keyboard. So if it's not what it's looking for, it's going to keep going and going and going until we finally give it a cookie, and then it will end the while loop. So that's an example of a sentinel controlled while loop. Now the third type of while loop is a flag controlled while loop. And a flag control while loop uses a Boolean variable to control the loop. So I'm going to keep many of the same pieces that we have in here, but the difference is going to be in how we're going to check to see whether this evaluates to true or false. So we're still going to have a while loop and we're still going to ask the user for the cookie um, and we're still going to output yum at the end when they do finally get a cookie. So what we're going to do is we're changing this condition check in here. So we're still going to get a string from the user for input. And as we said, the flag controlled while loop uses a Boolean to control whether this loop continues or not. So inside this parentheses here for our condition check, we need something that is a Boolean, true or false. So what I'll do is we're going to create another variable up here that's going to be of a bool type and I'm just going to call it is cookie. So this is the name of the variable and immediately I'm going to set it to false. And inside my while loop, now if I just said is cookie, right, this is false. So when this evaluates to false, the loop will not run. So let me just clear this out here and we can test it in this condition. So if I run, then it just says yum cookie because it got here to this while loop. Is cookie is false, so it says this is false, so don't run what's inside the curly braces. So it just skips the while loop altogether. So in other words, what we have to do is to make this true. So the opposite of false to make it true is not false, so exclamation point is cookie will make this true because this is false. So let's run it now. And now it starts with the while loop because this evaluates to true and now it asks for a cookie. And again, if I type in something that is not a cookie and not a cookie and not a cookie all lowercase, but then when I do finally type in cookie all lowercase, then last time cookie all lowercase is what made it end. So what, what do we need to change in here? Well, this is a true or false and it's not matching cookie. It's not matching the text string anymore. So now we have to do an extra check in here to see, okay, once we get the input from the user, we have to check and see if it equals cookie. 
So I'm going to say if, and I'm going to check my string, my input variable, to see if it's equal to cookie. Right, so now we're going to get it from the user. We're going to check to see if it is equal to cookie. And then if it is, we need to change the value of is cookie so that it's true and will end this loop. So I'm going to change is cookie to true. Now remember, inside of your parentheses where you have your condition check, you use two equal signs to check to see if they're equal to each other. Here I'm using one equal sign that will assign true to is cookie. So now it's going to come through. Before it wasn't evaluating anything, it was just keep on asking this because is cookie never became false. So let's clear this and we'll try running it again. And we'll put in some values. You'll see that the case doesn't make any difference. And now when I give it cookie all lowercase, right, it evaluated after each time I put in some text, it came down here and said, okay, gum. Is my input equal to cookie? Is gum equal to cookie? No. So then it didn't do this. Came back up is cookie is still true. So it comes down here and it says give me a cookie and it repeats this whole process, everything that's in here over and over again until this becomes false. So when we change is cookie to true, right, it comes back up here, is cookie is true and not true makes it false. And that's what finally ends the loop and comes out and displays our yum cookie see out statement. So those are examples of the three different types of while loops, flag controlled, sentinel controlled, and counter controlled.